uh, beautiful song, Fool on the Hill. You want to look who at wrote, these? Yeah, who wrote that? Oh, that's Paul that's McCartney. McCartney. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's, uh, you know, I should mention Magical Mystery Tour as a concept album. Um, with the su success of Peppers, we have McCartney on this huge high. Like, he's... He's inspired, he's coming up with ideas. And then you have Lennon and, and Harrison who are, are splitting from the unity of the Beatles. Lennon with his interest in Yoko and Harrison with his interest in Indian philosophy. Mm, and social and, justice and all that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And spirituality especially. Yeah. Like this, his whole spiritual trip that he was proselytizing. So blatantly, by the way. I went to a George Harrison concert and everybody was clapping along to My Sweet Lord and they were doing the Hare Krishna stuff. Mm. And he says, oh, okay, everybody... I want you to say the name of your Lord. Let's say Jesus Christ. And it just made everybody uncomfortable, like to start singing Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, all of a sudden you felt like you were at a Scientology meeting. Yeah, it was a little, it was a little <laughs> nice. But it was a great show. Tom Scott's band was there. Oh, and, man. Uh, Ravi Shankar's band was there, and they had a huge jam at the end. Oh, man. McCartney's, there was a rumor that he was hanging out in the front somewhere, but uh, and we were looking for him, but we didn't see him. Man. So... It's uh, Fool on the Hill. You know, my f really my first sort of listening contact with this was the Sergio Mendez and Brazil 66 <laughs> version. Totally different feel. Yeah. All right, so usually an ending chord for a Beatles song. Now he's using it as a body of the song chord. This is a D6. There's a D chord right here. And I'm opening it up so the B string rings. Okay. And if I were to count up a D scale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. That's the sixth note of the of the D scale, and we add that sixth note in by eliminating this root. But we're not eliminating the root because we have a D here. Okay. Okay. So. Very soft chords. What is that part? All right, so this is a D6. It's a D softened by the 6. This is an E minor 7, which is also softened by that minor 7. Right, right. All right. It's a tune that has sort of it has an underpinning of sort of being a happy song somehow under it. In a strange way, and yeah. I thought he was also being self-aggrandizing. I think McCartney thought of himself as the fool on the hill and being the wise man who nobody recognizes as being incredibly yeah. wise and all this, you know. Or maybe he's the one that's still hanging on to the Beatles or still hanging in there, but the others have left. Yeah, yeah. Or are leaving, whatever. Well, I think he, he, there is a sense of isolation in the song. And, and uh, yeah, I, you know, I didn't finish what I was saying. Actually, Magical Mystery Tour. Uh, Len, uh, McCartney wanted to keep this new creativity going, this new uh, sound that they created, uh -huh. and exploring even further. So he got the idea to make a movie called Magical Mystery Tour, which um, turned out to be a complete flop. Yeah. Uh, of course, there was a, a record to go along with it, and that included... I mean, it was a real toss-off because they just chucked some singles on there and added a few extra songs on it, and it really wasn't much of a record. There was a surprise. I mean, the first Beatles uh, instrumental was on there, unusual. You know. mm. um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was mostly a toss-off record, and you could see McCartney was, I wouldn't say beating a dead horse, but definitely beating a horse that was sluggish. Yeah. Know. And the Beatles were not into the concept of the Magical Mystery Tour um, uh, movie. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's kind of like what the monkeys did with the movie Head. It, it was just a complete idiotic, psychedelic mishmash of nothingness. And that's, sure. that's what Magical Mystery Tour was. Too. Uh-huh. I'd be curious to see it, but I, I, I heard it was just terrible. Huh. Mm-hmm. Is there anything uh, really surprising about this tune? Uh, Fool on the Hill. Just a an All right, well, there we have, I don't know if you could tell what this is here. We're going from D, D major 6 to D minor. Okay. So this is what's called a parallel, my, a parallel minor, major to minor shift. Okay. Same root, but you're going major D, minor D. Okay. All right, it's very abrupt. It's, it's not subtle. It just comes in. All right. <coughs> D minor now, all of a sudden we have a G minor chord. And then we're moving to F. In other words, this could easily... Right? But he doesn't do that. He was he was brilliant at doing this sort of thing. Minor major switches, just. Are there other are there other popular songs? I know I'm putting on the spot here. Are there any other popular songs that you you know about that major to minor switch that besides Beatles tunes? Wow, that's huge. Yeah, I know in your head you've got a database of. Well, thus spoke Zarathustra, but that's not a pop song. Oh really? Where where is that? In where 2001 does that happen? Space Odyssey. Yeah, where does it happen in the tune? Well, here we go. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. And then it goes back. Right? The, the big obvious, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah that, wasn't, that wasn't a mellow approach to it. <laughs> well, let's see if there's anything else in this song we can talk about. Uh, by the way, when you do the major minor switch like that, we're using chords from the D template, and then we go to D minor, the relative minor chord of the key of F major. So now we're using chords from the F template. Okay. Okay. And this the, the mix is lovely. Like it's a great sneaky way to, to like get all these nice little sonorities between the two keys. Let me ask you, just in terms of terminology, how how do you you say what that switch is happening? Is it is it a mode switch? Is it a key switch? What is it? It's, uh, it is a mode switch and it is a key switch, but the root stays the same, All right? So that's why it's parallel. When you keep the same root, like let's say I was in D mixolydian, right? Okay. And then I just suddenly jump to D, not even mi- a minor one, but say D ionian or, or D lydian. Okay. The two ma- other major modes. That, that, that's keeping the same root, but changing the mode. What that does is it changes key as well because you're introducing chords from different keys by doing that. Right. But the root remains the same. This is what I call parallel. It's not what they call parallel in classical schools. Okay. Parallel in classical schools is just major to minor. But the key system is bullshit. Really parallel movement is when you keep one root and move through any different, different mode. mode. Okay. And that would include the sub-modes of harmonic and melodic minor too. All right, did I answer your question, though? Yeah, you did. I mean, uh, you know, again, my feeble little mind probably doesn't comprehend uh, most of it, but you answered the question. Yeah. No, I'd say I just didn't know. If you were talking to another musician, how would you say this is what happens here? Well, most musicians are more familiar with the idea of relative minor than they are parallel minor. So oh, if I said, oh, we're going parallel minor... You know... The, they might, it might take a little bit of thinking on it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's not that formal. You call out to a musician, D minor! And they go. You know. <laughs> there you go. Okay. 
So that's why what I love about my jam band is because we're all co recorded directed to the computer. And nothing, mm -hmm. if we could scream as much as we want, nobody will hear it. The computer won't work. Oh, okay. So, like, while we're jamming, I'll say, go to the verse! It's really natural, you know. <laughs> it's like directing porn. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something I have extensive experience I'm sure. He spends a lot of time in the valley. All right. Well, listen, I think we're up for the day. Yeah, here. okay. Uh, uh, that's... The Fool on the Hill, the only other comment I want to make is the orchestration of it. Although it's very sparse, mm -hmm. it's very beautiful. He uses a bass harmonica, he uses accordion, he uses recorder and flute. And it's all very uh, earthy. It, it always, to me, has had a combination of sort of Brazilians in Paris at an outdoor cafe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You sure, know? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah.